How in the world does he not get suspended? This is ridiculous. This is a league that Patrick Ewing left one foot off the bench back in the late 90s, and the Knicks lost that series to Miami. Eight guys suspended. He threw something on the court. Mark Davis, the crew chief, said if we knew who did it, he would have been ejected from the game right there. If you're a fan and you spent a fortune to go to that game and you threw something on the court, they throw you out of the arena. How is Murray, and who cares about some stupid fine? A guy makes $50 million a year. The fine means nothing. Token. How does he play this game? You know what? If it was 1-1, I got a funny feeling he'd be suspended. The fact that it's 2-0 and Murray wasn't there for game three, I think the NBA wants something competitive. I know that's a tough thing to say, but I think there's something to it. That is a disgrace that he does not get suspended for the third game. The NBA is very soft here. I'm very down on it. Murray should not be playing on Friday night. Timmy? Yeah, I listen, I'm shocked that he wasn't. I said it yesterday. I'm relieved. I'm glad. Selfishly, I'm going to be there for game three on Friday night. I want to see Denver's best punch, and that's only going to happen with Jamal Murray. who has got a lot of pressure on him now. I mean, my goodness, not, not only the way he played in game two, now this, he wasn't suspended. You can imagine the treatment he's going to get in game three by that Minneapolis crowd. He's got to respond in a big way. I want to see Denver at full strength. So we're going to get that, at least closer to it with Jamal Murray. So I'm relieved. I'm shocked. I can't believe it, really. Because there's two components to this. One is, this goes on to the floor, this heating pack. By the way, I was shocked. That's the same heating pack I think I wore in the 90s. They haven't improved the technology. <laughs> I, don't know how, I don't know how that happened, but that's what it is. That thing's wet. It's about maybe an inch thick. Easily could have somebody step on the outside edge of that rolling ankle, whether that's Carl Anthony Towns or your own teammate. KCP kicked it inadvertently first. If that's Towns that comes down on that, rolls his ankle, and he misses any time, and he's limited in this series, you got a major problem on your hands. Or if he's limited going forward, even worse. The other thing that could happen, you step on top of it. It's slick because it's wet, and it's a slick surface. You could slide out. There's a groin tear. Now you got a real problem on your hands. So I just think the fact that that didn't happen – shouldn't get us distracted from the intent. The intent was, number one, it seems like he was throwing it at the official. So that's one thing. It went right past Mark Davis. Was he throwing it at him? I haven't heard Jamal, Jamal Murray comment on it. Or was he just frustratedly throwing it toward the court? I don't know. But it went right by Mark Davis, and that's who he was having the problem with all night. And it goes on to the court in the middle of five guys jumping down in the middle of the lane. I'm shocked from a player's safety perspective alone that the league did not suspend him for this game. Relieved, but surprised. I'm very relieved because I don't want any excuses. I want to see the reigning defending NBA champions go on the court fully loaded and try to defend their crown against this team that is threatening to obliterate them and make them completely irrelevant right now. That's what the Minnesota Timberwolves are doing with them. I remember, Doggy, in the first half, I haven't seen defense played like that against a team in 30 years. I mean, they, they were on lock and key. They were suffocated. They, they, Minnesota were like piranhas against these dudes. And they were frustrated, and you could see it. Contavious Caldwell Pope was frustrated. Jokic was frustrated. Aaron Gordon was frustrated. And, of course, Jamal Murray. I don't disagree with any of, of what you're saying, Doggy. Listen. There is no question that Jamal Murray deserves to be suspended. There is no question about that. There's also no question for those of you who are this young, wet behind the ears, breath smelling like Similac, don't know no better. Let me tell you something. There's a guy by the name of David Stern, God rest his soul, the former commissioner, Adam Silver's predecessor. All right? Adam Silver was the deputy commissioner when, when David Stern was commissioner. Obviously, Russ Granick was before him. Let me tell you something right now. David Stern had been that commissioner, I assure you, Absolutely. Jamal Murray would have been suspended Absolutely. for Friday's game. Absolutely. Not even a thought. And by, listen, listen. Obviously, it was far, far, far more serious than what transpired the other night. But when the, the brawl at the Palace in Auburn Hills took place years ago, what did David Stern say when he announced those suspensions for the rest of the season to Ron Artest and, and, and the 25 games or so to Jermaine O'Neal's and, and Stephen Jackson and all these guys? What did David Stern said? They said, did you put it to a vote? Yes. He said, yes, it was unanimous, one to zero. In other words, nobody else had a call. He, he wasn't having it. And that's exactly, I believe, even though one does not compare to the other, that's exactly how David Stern would have treated Jamal Murray. I bring that up. 
because it's important for Adam Silver, who is a great commissioner, in my estimation. I think he does an outstanding job. I think we're lucky to have him as the commissioner. But there are times where people have been reminding him of how tough he might need to be because of how lenient he has been to certain player issues. Adam Silver might want to be mindful of that moving forward. I appreciate the fact that Jamal Murray ain't suspended because I want to see him play too, Tim. I really, really do. But I also don't want to see this great commissioner, Adam Silver, having his name besmirched because people believe that he is not being as tough as he should be in certain situations. I do believe moving forward, the Mad Dog Russo of the world and others are not going to let up. They're going to continue to let this elevate and grow from the standpoint, yo, Adam, you got to step up and you got to do stuff about this. And they're not going to be wrong because when you see what happens, again, Jamal Murray has no track record. He's no repeat offender. He's usually class personified. By the way, it's not 50 million. It's 33 million he's getting paid this year. Doggy's 36 million next year, but that's neither here nor there. The point is the brother closes. He wins. He's a champion. All of those different things. This is not indicative of who he is. Jamal Murray's a good dude, all right? But he was out of character and out of pocket in doing what he did, and he's very lucky he's not suspended. Adam Silver, in the future, has to be mindful. Recently, we've been bringing up David Stern's name a little bit too much. And, he's very and that is to imply that yep. one was tougher than the present commissioner is. I think that Adam Silver needs to be mindful of that moving forward.